Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me. Sorry, I'm about 10 minutes late from when I said I'd join, but I had a little tussle with my with our kitty, little Dimki, who kept thinking that this chair is where he should be sitting, and I was telling him that this is where he should be sitting in our... Uh, well, that went on for a while, but, but I'm here in front of you, and it's good to be back to do a Foodocracy India uh, broadcast. It's been a, a while. I've been doing the Foodocracy for her broadcast, which has been with women in the food and beverage business. And we just spoke uh, last week. Uh, we had a very interesting conversation with Shibala of uh, Chennai just a few days back. And uh, today it's going to be about Mumbai. But again, there's going to be a South Indian touch. So uh, like you probably know, or as you've seen in the, uh, in, in the description, this is going to be a Foodocracy uh, India broadcast. Now, what is Foodocracy India? So for people who are new here, Foodocracy India is my series where I talk about uh, some of my favorite eating experiences across the country in, uh, you know, in, in family don joints, hole in the wall places, street food places, small cafes. These are places where India loves to eat. Um, many of them are still probably closed because of the lockdown and we are waiting for them to open. Some have opened in, in depending on which part of the country they are. But the main thing is that we miss them all. So the idea of Foodocracy for her is just to share uh, stories of eating there. I encourage you to do it as well in whichever um, you know social media format you are uh, close with. And Lile is saying that she's going to be uh, hungry after the chat. And it's going to be, you should be. It's about uh, Malayali food. It's about Mumbai. And uh, it's about a place called uh, Hotel Deluxe and Fort. Now, uh, you know, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about uh, today, but uh, but I was very keen to do a Food Ocracy India broadcast today. And uh, then suddenly since yesterday, and, and today definitely my Instagram feed has been flooded, been flooded with pictures of Onam Sadhyas, the, the feast, the banana leaf feast on the occasion of uh, Onam, which is celebrated by Malayalis uh, in Kerala and across the country and across the world. And, and I must say, um, I, I mean, I don't have the stats on this, but if I just go by uh, my gut feel, I think that of the various festival meals which are there across the India, I wouldn't be surprised if Onam is the one which has been uh, referred to the most, uh, the most in uh, in in, uh, um, in in social media and Instagram. In fact, our friend Zaved who lives lives down the road, he's in Dhaka right now, missing Mumbai. Hope he get back soon. And uh, then my friend Shashwati, so it's all like neighbors, <laughs> who's saying that she's a big fan of uh, Deluxe and uh, Eating Cultures, is saying Happy Onam. I was with him in uh, with Dushant in uh, Pune last year. So I've been seeing all these pictures and, and you know, I, I've been seeing different festivals like, you know, uh, on Ashtami, uh, the Punjabis, the Halwa Puri, Chode, uh, on our Ashtami of Bengalis, the Khichuri, uh, you know, Easter eggs and, and Biryani doing Eid and the various uh, modak during uh, Gan Ganesh Chaturthi or Ganpati. But I think that uh, the number of images of uh, the Onam Sadhya which I've seen, uh, and not just this year, even in the couple of years, uh, for the last couple of years, I don't think I've seen any festival food uh, so much. And and why not? I mean, you know, on, on the banana leaf, in fact, I remember as a kid eating banana leaf food, uh, food of the banana feed uh, leaves on weddings and well, you know, special occasions or Durga Pujas in Calcutta. Uh, so banana leaf uh, was a big part of our culture in Bengal as well. And, and it continues. It's also in the Parsi. So the Parsi weddings uh, and the Patra is basically banana leaf. Uh, and it was served uh, on that. And it's a big part of the Unam Sadhya. So all these beautiful pictures you see of the banana leaf with, uh, you know, the many, 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 many dishes uh, on that and bananas and salt and and pickle and uh, different types of uh, sabnis, sabzis and sambar and rice and, and in fact I did think of ordering uh, an onam sadhya this time but I must say that uh, uh, that that I felt a bit intimidated can I say I, I must be really honest I, I thought of ordering an onam sadhya and I was in touch with one or two people but I must confess that the idea of you know opening the banana leaf and taking some 25 to 30 little um, you know, containers and opening them. Um, I think being Bengali and you know not Malayali, I, I think I'm happier to see it. <laughs> but 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 I'm happy to see so many people cooking uh, onam sadhyas at home. In fact, 
We also had a reader commenting here, Mr. Mahanta, uh, that he's trying to cook with a lot of local ingredients. That's lovely. And Onam Sadia is all about that. It's, it's about local ingredients, seasonal ingredients. And, and it's good to see people cooking it at home, uh, people, home chefs offering it in places like Delhi, Mumbai, and, and people ordering it in. Some restaurants are doing it as well. So it's, it's good to see uh, all of that. In fact, uh, I was remembering, uh, you know, this my story with Deluxe, uh, the place I'm going to talk about, starts in around 2010, 2011, when I was in a company called TNS and Market Research. And, and we had a colleague there, young uh, colleague, Sneha Menon, who, was, uh, who, who is uh, Malayali. And, and she came and told us that on Onam, she actually, um, she and her sister and her brother and all of that, they were living uh, in one house in uh, Mumbai at that point. I know her sister, Smita Menon, by the way, she now, because she's with Condenas. So I, I think Sneha was the eldest. So she actually took on the responsibility of what her mother used to do. And for the first time that time, she uh, did a whole uh, Onam Sadhya menu uh, for herself, for her sister, for her brother, and, and one or two of their friends or cousins. So suddenly she stepped up and became the mother of the family. So that's the thing, that's the beauty about these festivals, uh, that it, it sort of connects you with your roots. So even if you're an immigrant, like for example, uh, you know, I'm Bengali living in Mumbai, but come Durga Puja, come Shashiti Puja, come Poyla, uh, Boishak, uh, the New Year, we, we get together and, and we celebrate over uh, food. I didn't know much about uh, Malayali food or Kerala food uh, till, till I went to this restaurant, which I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, which is Hotel Deluxe and, and then my first visit there was in uh, 2010 and, and uh, I was seeing that on my blog in fact. So what happened was that like I said I mean I used to work with a market research agency called TNS and, and uh, the office was at Andheri but we would just been shifted uh, because there was a new office coming up and all that so we had been shifted to Lakshmi building uh, which is in uh, Fort and, and talking of Onam we've got a young friend Pradyut joining in from uh, uh, from Alapi and and uh, hello Pradyut and, and happy Onam to you and your family and and all the Malayalis over here who've joined in uh, happy Onam to you as well. So um, uh, we were stationed at uh, Lakshmi Building, which those of you who are from the advertising circles in uh, Mumbai or otherwise will know, used to be the headquarters of uh, HTA or JWT and and TNS uh, you know had bought up RI Research International, which was part of. Uh, JWT and I started my career with IMRB which is again part of the same group but net net I was uh, at that time at Lakshmi building me and my team and uh, it's it's in Fort in, in South Mumbai near the Bombay stores opposite that and um, it's a place I was I thought I was familiar with because um, you know when I was new to Mumbai which was about 20 years back Fort was one of the places we used to hang around in and we used to go to uh, that area for Mukambo and Kobe Sisters and stuff like that and Mahesh and Apurva uh, which are the Mangalorean restaurants over there, the seafood joints and um, so I, I thought I knew Fort very well but then when uh, during this stint which was 2010 for about six months when I was at TNS at Lakshmi building I realized that there was so much over there there was such wealth of food which one had no idea about so what I used to do was I was, I was a boss you know I was, I was a big boss of the team the senior most person among the people there and had this huge office very decrepit inside uh, in fact the building was uh, inaugurated by Netaji Shubhash on the post before independence uh, so so I had this huge huge office and there was a terrace you know? and, and there were like lots of white sofas and tables and everything you set them there and you'd see they were all broken but uh, it was stop gap but that's how it was so every day what I used to do was I used to have a point and shoot camera then and, and, uh, and, and I'd take a, a little bottle of sanitizer, put it in my pocket way before pandemic and COVID and, and I'd go down and every day uh, just walk into one new restaurant, one new eatery, new for me but obviously they were very popular and uh, very crowded and, and uh, you know discover something new and, and then uh, you know come back to office, uh, take pictures and that's why I would have the sanitizer because I'd clean up my hands and then I come back to office and, and sit at my desk and write about it. So uh, and, and that's how like uh, during this period, if you go to my blog, find the chop in the period 2010 uh, for about six months, 
you'll find lots and lots of stories from uh, Fort uh, over there. And, and we've got Marina Balakrishnan joining in, Thalassari girl. Uh, she did some fantastic Onam Sadhya's uh, yesterday uh, under Utupura and, and she'd written about how a year back uh, she'd done it in Delhi. And, and uh, Marina, I must say that I was telling people before you joined in that I was tempted to order Sadhya and I was in uh, touch with you actually. But I got a bit intimidated at the idea of opening so many uh, you know, boxes and, and I thought that uh, maybe some other time. So I, I had a, a simpler meal. But uh, yeah, so, so I would go out and I would discover, find a new place, come back, write about it, post it on my blog and almost daily, you know, that was uh, happening. And as I was doing that, uh, you know, there would be my readers on, on the blog, people used to leave comments on the blog back then or on Twitter and, and so on, who would write to me, uh, who would share their recommendations and forth. Sometimes they would go to places I would uh, go over there or, or sometimes they would suggest places to me and just becoming like one nice happy family. In fact, that period which I spent over there became the foundation of my transition from being a market researcher to a food writer because uh, one of the first things which I did professionally once when I made the switch was uh, food walks and, and um, a majority of my food walks have been done in Fort, including the second one was a, was a Fort uh, Finely Chop Food Walk. And then my book, when it got commissioned, uh, The Travelling Belly, was based on these food walks. So there's a dedicated Fort uh, chapter. And, and the place which I'm talking to you about, Deluxe, is a place where I'd been uh, commissioned to write an article uh, for the BBC Good Food uh, at that time, uh, when it was a Times publication, not, not the current um, form in which it is there. So one day I, I was uh, at work and at my desk and, and suddenly I saw that someone had sent me a tweet um, and those days people would have conversations on Twitter, not, not like today where everyone also kills everyone. So uh, that person said that, you know, I, um, he, was, he was telling me that I'm, I'm Malayali and I, and I work in Fort and I must tell you about this place called Deluxe and that is where all of us Malayalis who work in Fort uh, go to eat. And I really suggest you go to eat there because uh, you'll get a good taste of uh, authentic Malayali food or, or what is home food. So I thought it was a great idea because I had not at that point eaten uh, much beyond maybe the stew or the appam. And in fact, my first trip to Kerala happened only a few months back last December when I went to Cochin. And uh, oh wow, we've got uh, Lilays who was part of the first few food walks in Ford way back in 2012. We had amazing things including the Bombil Fry. Maybe that would have been the seafood walk. Bombil Fry would have been at uh, Pradi. But uh, thanks so much for joining it. It's, it's, it's lovely to hear from you. So uh, yeah, so, so I said that let's uh, go there. And, and there were, um, I was, I was going to head out at lunchtime and then there were a couple of my colleagues. Uh, one of them is Deepak Bengani, he's a Marwari, loves food, vegetarian. And I think uh, there was this other Punjabi girl from Delhi. I, I, I just can't remember her name. She was probably vegetarian as well. So um, they were at a loss on what to do for... No, no, yeah. yeah. So Deepak and Ira Jangiani. She's, she's in the vegetarian. They were wondering what to do for lunch. So I told them, look, there's this uh, Kerala place. So do you guys want to join? And we'd go there. So we said, okay. So uh, we, we got out of uh, Lakshmi building. Uh, walked towards the main road, crossed the Vodafone shop and, and took a left. There's a little South Indian temple over there at the corner. It's called Pitha Street, that area. And we walked down and, and suddenly we came across uh, a simple sign uh, in a building, old building, which said uh, Hotel Deluxe, uh, which has Dipankar Singh over there, one of the best Malayali restaurants in Bombay. Hands down, I, I completely uh, agree. Of course, things are now changing with people like Marina Balakrishnan, or, or the folks at uh, Sarah Jacob and Chef Nair at Nair and Fire putting in their, uh, you know, more home cooking sort of uh, food. But, but it's good. I mean, we get to experience so much more. So we went there and it's a two-story restaurant. Buildings are three, four stories. Uh, it's, it's an old, old, all old buildings over there. So you have to climb up. And, and there's a um, eating section in the ground floor. But they said that uh, why don't you go up because you can get the banana leaf thali. So we said, okay. So we went up and we were asked AC, non-AC, so we said, uh, let's go to AC. And uh, we went in and uh, we, I think now the entire upper section is uh, air-conditioned. And, and we saw that the whole place was packed with people. It's, it's lunchtime uh, and, and uh, I think we had a few non-Malayalis around and, uh, and everyone was talking 
in what I, I, I assume was Malayali. And, and uh, it, you, you know, you're walking over there and you feel that it's, you've reached a good place. Like, you know, so you see the buzz and, and all the happy faces and, and focus look uh, on the eyes of people when they're eating and, and, you know, the busyness with which the waiters are walking around, the earnestness with which the service is happening, uh, the big balties or, or buckets of rice, dal and everything which is being uh, taken around. Oh, someone saying many of the waiters are Bengali in Deluxe. That's, that's true. Um, uh, all across Mumbai actually so we so we went there and we decided to uh, go for the banana leaf uh, sadhya so sadhya means ceremonial meal and and we went for that which is which is vegetarian so deluxe was started by a gentleman called Hussein um, Haji Haji Hussein who'd come from a place called Kosan Ghat uh, in, in Kerala and and he's now no more his sons uh, run it according to waiter it's almost 40 to 50 years old Though some people told me it started in 1970, which does make it 50 years old actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 1970, 50 years, huh? not, not bad. Huh? So, um, so, but while they're Muslim, they have a lot of uh, Hindu food as well. And then the Sadhya is more a part of the Hindu part of uh, Kerala and is vegetarian. So we, we did that and we did some prawn fry, uh, prawn roast and some curry mean fry, uh, which is uh, pearl spot fish, which is... Uh, any, any, if you see any uh, uh, food show shot in Kerala, they will always be doing curry meen. I've had curry meen in some top uh, luxury restaurants and hotels uh, in, in Mumbai. But uh, I think that the quality in, uh, in, in uh, Deluxe is way better. And we've got uh, delectable referees joining in. Uh, she's now in Gurgaon, but she was at Mumbai that time and, and we'd gone on a food walk uh, together, it seems. So, um, yeah, so, so it was nice. But I think... I, 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 I thought the prawns were okay, like there was like a lot of masala, the curry mean was beautiful. What won my heart, and, and Marina, you'll be happy to hear this, Varnika, you'll be happy to hear this, uh, was the vegetarian food. So it was, it was so nice, you know, the pickles and the poppers which they got in this big uh, aluminium uh, sort of canister, and, and then, uh, you know, the, even the salt in it, uh, then, uh, you know, the, the rice, and, and I'd gone early. So we could get the red mata rice. I mean, later, if you, if you go late, then the, that rice gets over and they give you white rice. And then there was the sambar, then there was something called the pachari, which was a bit of a pineapple raita sort of stuff. And, and then there was a sabzi made with uh, ripe bananas. And I think it's called kalan. And there's something else called nelan. But I remember everything was so, so, so nice uh, over there. And to, just to give you an idea of how much I enjoyed the food, that uh, remember I told you when I was in Fort every week I'd go every day I'd go and try out different places but there were two restaurants which I'd go to every week one was Ideal Corner uh, where I'd go for Parsi food and and uh, the other one was Deluxe so these two places I'd go once a week so uh, and and Olan so not not Kolan <laughs> but but Olan yes uh, Marina's uh, correcting me you should see her page her Instagram page there's so much information on uh, Malayali food which he uh, puts over there so um, you know so i would keep going there every week and uh, and i would always have the banana leaf thali at uh, at um, um, at uh, which is the place i'm talking of uh, deluxe yes 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 while at idle corner i would normally go for the railway uh, mutton or or for the um dhansak or the pulao dal or whatever so that that became really my uh, benchmark and I, I would love that i would keep going there I was there in Fort for six months and I would go there every week and, and, and it was really a consistent experience that you'd go up and it'd be crowded, it would be packed and, and uh, yet the waiters would be able to recognize uh, people and, and all most of them were regulars, most of them were seeming uh, speaking in what seems like uh, Malayali and, and there was vegetarian food going on, non-veg, fish, chicken, mutton and, and with time I, I discovered some of the other nice things like I had once uh, fish curry over there which was beautiful uh, the kingfish fry, lovely. Uh, then, um, then I, st I tried the uh, beef paratha and uh, and um, you know beef fry and paratha, which is made with buff meat. They don't write it in the menu, uh, but uh, but they have mutton on the menu. But you can get that as well, and it's uh, buffalo meat and the paratha. Later in in Kochi, I had it at a place called Balans, which I believe was the only Hindu-run uh, beef paratha place over there, very popular. Drunk pizza girl is saying whether it's raining in Mumbai. It's been raining on and off, but but not uh, right now. Yes, yes, yes. 
Amru Ayer Ghosal, she was a friend of mine looking for um, uh, Onam Sandhya's today. I think she woke up a bit too late, but hopefully she'll get something uh, close. And I'm just responding to some of the comments over here. So, uh, and, and then once I tried the biryani, and, and, and I call that a bit of a, like, uh, you know, magic trick biryani. And I'll tell you why. Because when you order the biryani over there, it comes in a little pot. I've had the egg biryani. I've had the fish biryani, I've had the mutton biryani. So it comes in this, uh, you know, vessel and, and they put it on your plate. And when you're looking at it, it's it's small grain rice, unlike say basmati, which is there in the Mughlai side of biryani. And and it, to me, when you look at it from the top, it looks like a very Calcutta biryani. The rice is short grain and Calcutta is longer grain, but it was white. You know, there's not too much of masala, there's not too much of gravy, unlike what you get in Mumbai in places like Lucky, Nurani, uh, you know, Jafar Bhai. So I would think, ah, wow, this is like our Calcutta biryani. This is going to be subtle. There won't be any spices in it. And I'd take some on my plate and the first two places like that where spoons would be like that, spoonfuls and it will be this, um, you know, taste of the stock and everything. And then, hello, what's, what's happening there? There would be like, below the rice would be the masala and the meat or the egg and, and all that. And you're supposed to uh, mix it and uh, eat it. I, I remember once doing a biryani walk in fort for uh, Romi uh, Gill and uh, Romi Hardeep Gill, the food writer and a journalist. And, and we had gone to Ideal Corner. Sorry, we went to Jimmy Boyd for the Parsi Pulao Dal. We went to uh, Baremia uh, for the uh, Mughlai Bombay Biryani. And uh, we went to Apurva where we had a prawn biryani. And, um, and, and at uh, Deluxe, we had the Kerlite Biryani. Now, one more thing I noticed when I was going there regularly is that uh, that the regulars would, uh, regular customers would always get a little bit of extra attention from the waiters. So sometimes they would even slip in like, uh, I saw once an extra fish fry and, and the waiter was telling this, uh, you know, the customer that, you know, today there's some fresh fish which has come and, and, and sir has sent it, the manager has sent it over to you. So they would have some fresh fish fry, this, that. So the regulars would always get these little extras. I would normally end up going there alone, but I would also get full uh, attention, good treatment and everything. And then one of my last meals before I you know, moved out of that office in Fort, uh, he came and uh, gave me a hot glass, steaming hot glass of uh, rasam, you know, hot piping hot. And, and then they came and said that complimentary, sir. So that's the day I realized that, you know, after going week after week after week after week to this Malayali, uh, joint, uh, suddenly I was um, uh, accepted. So uh, Lilia was talking of the Kais and, and Kochi uh, biryani place. I missed that uh, this time, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to try the biryanis over there. So uh, I, it, it felt good to be sort of accepted over there, uh, just as you know Mumbai is, because Mumbai accepts all immigrants. And, and as we'll see, um, Deluxe is a, a symbol of, of, of that. In fact, I would often take people back uh, to Deluxe when I would do uh, food walks in Fort. Typically, we'd go for the uh, beef parotta because, uh, or the kurma parotta, or sometimes we do the pomfret, uh, the one which they wrap up in the leaf and uh, you know do with tamarind and all that. Vain and I think, if I got it wrong. Uh, we would rarely do the whole banana leaf sadhya because uh, you know in a food walk you're going to various places, so you can't do your fill uh, over there. But uh, once the waiter was telling me that, you know, in a sadhya, in the Onam sadhya, which I think they observe over three days at Deluxe, they do 25 uh, dishes, or if not more. And, and they said they call special cooks over from back home to cook it. And then they showed me the list. And the list in, included salt. So that 25, and, and I'm seeing some of the sadhya lists now also. So salt seems to be an integral uh, part of that. Uh, mean polichitu, says uh, Marina. And Marina salt seems to be an integral part of uh, the Onam Sadhya, right? It's not just to make up the numbers to 25, 37, uh, whatever. Let's let's see if we can hear from uh, uh, Marina on that, if she can leave a comment. But um, I, 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 and I, I, I was, I remember being at Fort One Onam when I was still working there. And I saw there was a huge, yes, yes, salt is a uh, integral part of the Onam Sadhya, says Marina Balakrishnan. You must check her page. That Tharasai girl and, and and try to order from her, but there's a big queue because she gives so much information on uh, uh, Kerala food and the science and culture and heritage behind it. 
uh, yeah and and she said the salt is there to balance the flavors because there's a bit of sweet there's a bit of sour there's a bit of uh, hotness then and you know there all the flavors popping uh, all over so i remember and i was saying marina about this that i happened to be in fort uh, one onam where i was still working there and i saw there was huge crowds outside uh, deluxe and uh, then i decided that i'm going to give that a miss and and eat something else and and go there on regular days because i could realize that there must be a lot of homesick uh, malayalis standing there uh, to get their fill of onam just the way say we would queue up outside places like o calcutta or bhajuri manna uh, doing bengali new year or durga puja as a bengali so i thought that is best to leave my space to someone to whom it means uh, a, lo- a lot more yes yes in fact saraswati ayer saying that in a banana leaf food menu salt is a very integral part in fact i must say that even in calcutta when we would uh, eat on the banana leaf whether it's at home or a wedding or a puja or something like that uh, they put the banana leaf and first they put in the salt and and the nimbu and and the green chili and and i remember sometimes mixing the curry and and, and the rice or the dal and adding that salt to it and i was very young then but I, but i strongly believe that there was a certain change in the taste of the food which would happen because of the banana leaf which which you cannot which which you cannot uh, replicate on a stain, stainless steel plate or or bone china or or or, or whatever you know and the thing of slurping everything up from the banana leaf so which which connects us whether you are bengali whether you are parsi uh, not the, not the parsi parsi use knife and fork when they eat it out of the uh, patra but uh, you know to me uh, deluxe is a lot more than just a restaurant and and the reason why i'm talking uh, about it you know in in mumbai when it comes to uh, south indian food uh, it's it's uh, people talk largely of uh, mangalorean places like you know the the apurvas and the shetty dan places uh, mahesh and uh, all these places and shiv sagars but i think before the udp places uh, were the kerala places and you see a lot of them if you go to in fort like for example there's a vegetarian place called lalit and where once someone told me that the prime minister of kerala had come to inaugurate it soon after independence so they probably meant chief minister but uh, it was opened soon after in- so a lot of these places opened in the 1950s so uh, places like um, uh, deluxe actually started as a vegetarian place then it became non veg uh, then just down the lane is taste of kerala i'm told that is a staff from deluxe which which opened that so it's a sort of breakaway faction uh, don't quote me on that i'm not sure then again if you go cross the road from away from ideal corner then you'll find some of the more overtly uh, muslim run places like ramania or fountain plaza where 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 the focus is more on non veg uh, you know so it's a very different sort of food and i've i've had some nice uh, curries and porotas over there lila is asking is there anyone who does a non veg sadhya meal now my understanding is that a sadhya onam sadhya is is meant to be a vegetarian meal i i remember once in being in bangalore on onam and a malayali colleague of mine had invited me over and his wife had made porotas and stuff like that and chicken curry they were they were muslim so uh, they, they they told me that, uh, that uh, onam is actually vegetarian but you know in the spirit of it so i know there are some people uh, like nair on fire for example um, who who did uh, non veg sadhya this time but i don't know if technically maybe if marina is still around she can tell us if if uh, sadhya can be technically uh, non veg as well but going back uh, let's uh, moving away from sadhyas for a moment so what i meant was that in the 1950s there were a whole lot of these restaurants which had opened in uh, fort especially the kerala ones which had all uh, come up to uh, feed uh, the people uh, who'd come there to work okay just breaking news marina says that in north malabar sadhya das have uh, non veg so okay thanks thanks marina i'm going to go to you any times i have any questions on uh, the food of your state but but now we know so uh, not malabar has sadhya so uh, you know in the year uh, years after independence when mumbai being the commercial capital there were a lot of people who come in from all over the country to work in mumbai the commercial capital and fort was the original business uh, district there were a lot of south indians who were working in you know the banks the legal firms and 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 uh, you know ca firms and so on and and these restaurants actually came up to feed them so the the mangalorians came a bit later i think in the 60s and and they first started up with the vegetarian restaurants and then the lunch homes 
serving uh, fish fry and they got liquor permits and all that. But I think the Keralites came a bit before that. And, and they set up restaurants like Lalit and then there was Deluxe and Ramania and, and Fountain Plaza and, and all of that. Uh, there, uh, there are other pockets of Mumbai where they're there. Like, for example, there's a place called Chembur and uh, sorry, a place called Sunny in Chembur, which some of my early food blogging friends had told me about. They're Bengalis who live there and they would keep going there for the beef fry and porota. We often made plans for going there, but we never ended up because I was told parking is difficult and, and so on. And uh, then, then there's a Mahim Causeway stretch where there are two places, Neha and Madina. Um, which are which are both uh, again Muslim run places, um, and and I loved having the buff uh, parotta over there, and also the buff biryani made with, made with kappa, tapioca, and and I believe friends who stay in Mahim would also go there often in the morning for the egg roast and appams. So uh, there, 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 then there's a stretch in Andheri East where there again uh, quite a few Malayali uh, places. So. Uh, you know, Mumbai has this undercurrent of uh, Keralite, uh, Malayali places, but um, they're not really as spoken about as the uh, Shetty joints or the Mangalorean uh, run South Indian places. I, I think the the Mangaloreans probably as a community are, are more industrious, the Shetties. Also, it was like a big sort of family enterprise, like when they came and opened their restaurants here, then uh, their relatives from the villages or the friends came over to work as, as uh, you know, the managers, the cooking staff and, and um, you know, things. They even got loans from the bank, the Kanara Bank, as Kamilia Punjabi was once telling me. I, I don't think that there was that much community uh, or support uh, to the Keralite community over here. And, and slowly as uh, the Mangalorean, uh, you know, uh, restaurant thing overwhelmed and eclipsed I think whole of South Indian in, in uh, Mumbai, I think the little Kerala pocket which was there was there in one uh, quiet corner and continues to be there. So old timers, food lovers, people who know uh, old Mumbai or Bombay so to speak would be that would be familiar with it. Not so much uh, perhaps the new generation or new settlers of uh, Mumbai. And um, the, there were some uh, Tamil places also but now the Tamil places are mainly those some of the people who make street side uh, dosas or varas, medu varas, at least they are Tamilians. For like for example, uh, the gentleman at uh, Bandra East, and he's no longer uh, sits there, but his uh, picture was there in my cover of my book, The Traveling Delhi. So uh, it's it's more of that. But what I like about the story of uh, Deluxe is that it captures what the spirit of Mumbai is all about: a city which which welcomes all with uh, open arms. As long as you're willing to, uh, you know, work your butt out, so to speak. As, uh, as for example, our people like Marina Balakrishnan, Sarah Jacob, uh, Vinod Nair, all, all the new uh, Keralite home chefs who are setting up enterprises and, and introducing us to another facet of Malayali Keralite food, which is the home cooked food. And that has been the beauty of this lockdown. But like I said, Mumbai is a city which, which uh, welcomes you, allows you to be who you are. And, and if you're willing to work hard, then uh, and then uh, you can sort of uh, you know create your life over here and and to make it easy there are all these um, community restaurants which would uh, feed food from your community so it's there's the kerala places and the gujarati thali places or all the maharashtrian food joints the seafood joints which have uh, set up uh, to feed um, you know the people from uh, uh, places like malwan and all would come to work in the cloth mills so that is what the spirit of Mumbai is all about and, and uh, I think Marina is still with us so I really like what Marina had said about her cooking philosophy she said that when she cooks she doesn't look at it as a task or something to be done she looks at it as an opportunity to nourish uh, someone she said that this is something which uh, she had learned from her grandmom when, when she was a kid and when she would see her grandmom cooking and feeding uh, people uh, back home so I, I would feel that this is the spirit of Mumbai as well and, and in restaurants like uh, Deluxe and, and so many untold restaurants which are there uh, and, and thanks to which our life in Mumbai has become so much more wonderful. In fact, Lilaes is asking, how is Deluxe faring during the lockdown? I'm, I'm really unaware of it. I must be, I must confess, I, I do not know if they are doing deliveries. Hoshner is saying whether I make Parsi dishes, well, I'm Bengali married to a Parsi. 
So I, I'm afraid I don't do too much of Parsi cooking. Uh, Vikas is saying, hi, chef. I'm not a chef. I just uh, like uh, talking about food. So um, that's uh, all I really wanted to say about uh, Hotel Deluxe in Mumbai, which is the place, which is my favorite place for uh, Kerala or Malayali food uh, restaurants in, in Mumbai. Uh, it will always be special to me because that's where I fell in love with the food of this uh, state and, and the wonderful food here. And since then, it's been a journey of discovery for me. Uh, like I said, a little bit of taste of that I got when I went to uh, Cochin, um, you know, uh, in, in Christmas, very short trip. But uh, even that was lovely. Uh, then uh, Marina Balakrishnan's first Uttapura meal, and what a fantastic meal it was. Very recently from Nair and Fire, again, different perspectives of food, very, very, very nice food. So it's been lovely, it's, it's been wonderful. Uh, we miss all these places, we miss being able to go to these places. But, but we love them, we love them. And, and the idea of uh, you know, my talking about them in Foodocracy India is to sort of share this love. And, uh, with them and, and sort of hope that the positive vibes reach them and, and hope that once the day open and, and hopefully that'll be soon we can all go there and have lovely meals again and, and please support small businesses in the food and beverage industry across your country wherever you are whether it's home chefs whether it's restaurants whether it's you know entrepreneurs making uh, you know dishes you know chutneys and relishes or pap papas or cupcakes let's do whatever we can uh, you don't, you don't have to go out of the way and stop cooking at home or order what you don't want to do or go beyond your means. But but uh, if you can, then then let's support them. And I'm just going to say bye to a few people who are saying hi now. There's Everyday Food Wishes uh, saying hello. There's Food with Shane saying hello from Saudi Arabia. Pradyumna, Pradyum Shahani, Seeking Man. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, like I said earlier, good to see you, Shashwati, Dushan, uh, Varnika, Malik, uh, Marina. And Marina, thanks so much for all your inputs and uh, wish you all a very, very, very happy Onam. And one day we'll sit together and I'll have someone to give the things on the banana leaf to me. And I won't have to open the container and sanitize it at every bit. And I'm going to enjoy my Onam feast that day. But till then, a very, very happy Onam to everyone. And a, and a big thanks to all those people, whether it's home chefs, caterers or restaurateurs who really worked against all odds to create Onam menus. And, and pack them and sanitize it and yeah, you know, give it to that. And, and I, I know how happy you must have made uh, so many people. So thank you so much. Marina is telling us the proper way to greet people, which is Ona Sham Sakai. Ona, 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 Sham, Ona Sham Sakai to you too. And Foodie with Shane is saying, uh, happy Onam, next time come to Calicut. I would love to, I would love to. So uh, thank you. This is Kalyan Karmakar signing off from Mumbai. Stay safe, eat well. Uh, if, if you can get a banana leaf some point, then remember our friends in, uh, in Kerala. And uh, uh, the pandemic is still there. So uh, please uh, you know, keep safety norms in terms of sanitizing. If you're ordering food in uh, from outside, uh, sort of dish, uh, ditch the containers, wash your uh, hands well, uh, heat the food before eating. Uh, try avoiding socializing with people. If you have to go out, definitely wear the uh, mask. And uh, that's about it. Everyday food wishes is saying share your favorite food. I, I love all food. I think in the afternoon I, I enjoyed uh, you know the the ragi, uh, sorry the jawar bhakri which our cook made, and the Bengali style mung dal and begun para which is bharta, and uh, and the Parsi garapnu pickle uh, which is fish roe uh, pickle. In the morning I enjoyed the bacon sandwich that I had. In the evening I ha enjoyed the maggi which I had with. Uh, uh, some leftover roast chicken at night i'm going to enjoy the liver masala which i have I, I i think i like any food which is in front of me and made with love and care and i think i like it a bit more if i make it myself but there's no way i'm ever going to make a onam sadhya so so thank you once again and and take care stay well and uh, onasham sakai to everyone thank you bye